Welcome to Landria Anka on YouTube, here to help you break through fears and live an awesome life. <sighs> Doesn't it feel good to smile? Come on, you're not smiling right now? Try it. It feels really good. Okay. Then maybe you start to laugh a little bit. <laughs> then you go, I don't know why I'm laughing. It just sort of feels good. And it makes you realize how crazy life is and that we are really totally in control of our emotions. If we want to be, everything's a choice. Let's talk today about judgment. All right, so the course that I'm releasing, hopefully at some point, this will already be out there. I actually am taking the course myself. It's a course where I'm helping people to break through their fears, really examining what it is they're going after, where their blocks are, how they can really create an awesome life. What does that even mean? I think we don't even know half the time what that is. And really takes them through a 12-week course. This is very extensive and every week should be a major breakthrough. It has been for me. You know, I'm always learning new things from myself. Well, it's not really from me, right? We're always tapping into that huge collective consciousness of which we all are. So my point is that I don't want to teach unless I'm living and practicing what I'm speaking. How can I teach and then go out there and not live what I'm sharing with you works for me. May not work for you. Because I need to practice it to know that. To know that I can move past fear. To know how I deal with it and what works for me. And hopefully some of these practices will work for you. And so, you know, practicing what you teach is no different than you practicing what you speak every day. Whether you're on a YouTube channel speaking to thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, or if you're talking to your neighbor, it's so critical for us to pay attention to what we're speaking and how we may be judging in that speech, right? We're all allowed our opinions. That's what makes us so interesting and diverse. But what is behind those opinions? And if there is a judgment behind that, it may be time to take a good look at that and ask yourself where that's coming from. And if, well, the universe is benefiting from it, or if that's something you really need to become aware of and break through, and I'll tell you why. So I'll give you an example. Um, many, many years ago, many years ago, if I saw somebody with a tattoo I would probably not speak to them. I was brought up in a very conservative um, region of the U.S., the Midwest, in a very conservative neighborhood with, you know, the, you know, typical, uh, you know, white families um, in with, you know, big pieces of property out in, you know, fairly rural area, and, um, you know, I was the captain of the cheerleading squad, you know, it's, it was that kind of life. It was a very, very um, secure, stable childhood. Awesome, awesome childhood. I chose that this time. Didn't need the drama. Didn't get the drama. Because life is going to have challenges even if you grow up in the perfect situation, right? But I still, of course, had ideas of how the world functions because you believe the world functions according to what you usually grew up in or what you decided to adapt or adopt after that if you didn't like what you grew up in. And then you create that whole world there. And most of that excludes certain types of people. Most of that has a judgment, including religions, who are probably even better at excluding people, most of them can be very uh, rigid in their um, beliefs and opinions. And of course, there's wonderful, I'm not against religion, trust me. I think there's some awesome, beautiful things that come from that. To me, religion, when I say religion, it's that there are certain rules and this is the way things are and this is how the universe works and God and that that's it. 
So there's no openness to that. And then, of course, there may be judgments. And let's just get off of religion. There may be judgments, you personally, about what other people are like according to what they call themselves. Let's say, let's pick Muslim. I think Americans are petrified of Muslims because of this whole propaganda programming. You know, I always say to people, or, or, or what they believe in, all right? What, do you really know? If you are not a Muslim, can you tell me what a Muslim does or doesn't believe? Probably not. I had somebody recently say they don't believe in God. I'm like, what are you talking about? All right, let's do our homework, people. And by the way, it's like saying Baptist. One Baptist may be not allowed to sing or dance, and another one, it's perfectly fine. We make assumptions about each other, and we create differences and judgments separate us. Because that judgment is saying that you are right and that is somehow wrong or doesn't fit in or shouldn't be happening or they shouldn't be this way. And that's what a judgment is. Judging. Of course, the word judgment can be used for many different things. I'm talking about the kind of judgment that separates us. So let's say I see somebody with a tattoo and I think, ooh, probably, probably comes from a lower income family. Uh, probably a little rough, may smoke, possibly do drugs or drink, or just really tough, tough person. Now, some of that might be true, but we know a lot of people get tattoos that aren't like that at all. So, what do I benefit by making all those judgments and assumptions at that moment from a colored thing that's on somebody's skin? How would I know until I talk to that person what they're like? And by the way, even then I may not really know who they are. We put up fronts, we put up facades too, according to what people think. Sometimes people get tattoos to look tough, and they're really not at all. They're little cupcakes inside. This could go on and on and on. I'm going to tell you something right now. You will catch yourself. Take, take today and say, I'm going to catch all my thoughts and ask myself if that was a judgment. Okay, you may see, you know, a certain type of person. Let's say you see somebody like, you know, who's pretty and rich, and your assumption is they have it made. They've never had any issues, or if they do, big deal. Why? Because you're probably not coming from that background. Otherwise, you might relate to them differently. We do it constantly. We see a, what, a pit bull. That's a big one. Pit bull. That animal's going to be violent. Why? Because pit bulls have been used for that, and we associate that with a very angry, aggressive animal. And that we see one, we assume that. I've never met a pit bull that wasn't a little cutie baby. Loving animal. Can you take today and catch yourself and realize how many times judgment you judge things? And I'm going to tell you why. That is a major block to everything. That is a, these are rules. That's the ego. That is not an openness to unlimited abilities. That's not you connecting to the universal quantum field that creates everything. That is you putting up barriers. Even if it's not the barrier about what you want to manifest, it is a barrier. Why? If you are not connecting to your fellow man, if you are not loving them, opening up to them, accepting. Now I'm telling you, if somebody's negative or violent, walk away. Walk away and accept that that is where they are at that point and let them go. We're not here to fix them. But the judgment comes in when we're saying good, bad, shouldn't be that way. I'm going to tell you, I cannot tell you how many people, you know this has been a controversy if you've been watching my videos. I didn't even know what that was, by the way. Some lovely person wrote in and said, it's a bodhisattva, it's a sign of peace, that's all. It looked peaceful. It is a piece of, it's a decorative item. I cannot tell you how many people have made comments on that. Judgments. 
I worship Buddha. Nobody worship. Did you know nobody worships Buddha? Do you know what a Buddhist is? And people assume because I have this in my house that I'm a Buddhist. I have never claimed anything. Ever. I've never claimed to be anything. Have I? Find it. Go ahead. Watch all 900 videos as of this one. <laughs> Tell me if I ever said I was a Buddhist or anything else. I try to live my life as peacefully as possible as a human being on a dense planet. That's it. And that is just a piece of a decorative item that I find peaceful. And I do think that the Buddhist path, the way of living, is a lovely one because it accepts acceptance is of everything and everybody in all religions is part of what they live by. And also there is the Eightfold Path that is just a way of living, of loving, of giving, of accepting, of openness. And that can't be negative, right? Not if you're using it you know, with the best of intentions. But there's judgments, constant judgments. You know, I've had Jehovah Witness knock on my door. And they think that what they believe is right, and they're there to convince me. And I asked them, I said, <laughs> I admit I did this it's a few years ago. I said, oh, oh, well, do you know, uh, are you familiar with the Buddhist path? And they said, no. And I said, I went and got a book. And I said, well, let me share what I, I feel and think. And by the way, I was totally pushing the limit here. I said, and this and that. And by the way, Buddhists accept Jehovah Witnesses. You could be a Buddhist. Jewish people can be Buddhists, and Christians can be Buddhists. And, and I said, and everybody, isn't that, isn't that wonder? Have you ever considered this? Because that includes everybody. And they didn't know what to say. They just didn't know what to say. Do you have a relationship with God? I said, yes, everybody does. Don't you? <laughs> I said, I don't have to be a Jehovah's Witness to do that. And it really threw them off whack because what I was saying is that I'm not trying to convince them of anything. I'm just telling them that I am open, that I'm not going to try and fight them. See, when you battle things, when you battle things, when you see somebody that you don't approve of, you battle, you've already got a judgment, you've put separation, you are creating blocks all around you. We have got to, we've got to pull those lines down. I can't tell you how many people have told me recently some really supposedly bad stuff about themselves and got no reaction from me. Why? Because people make mistakes. I'm looking at this person right now and what they're doing and how they're behaving and what they're striving for. And everything up until that point was just a story. It was an experience. And by the way, I'm going to do a video after this. What is that story? Is that even true? I want to expand your mind. Why? I benefit from it in this whole planet. This whole universe does. That's what I came here for. And I want you to join me because I know you're here for a reason. And every day that you expand your mind, drop the judgments, Stop saying to yourself that what you think and do and believe and were, were brought up, told, is the way. It's the way for you. You don't have to convince anybody else of that. And if it's a peaceful, positive way, that's awesome. That's what you should stick to. And that may change, and maybe another way will come in. I didn't know what the Eightfold Path was many years ago. I was not brought up with one religion. My parents took us to numerous churches so that we'd get exposed to different religions. I thought that was fabulous. And if I didn't like something, I told my mom, I don't, I don't like it. I don't want to go. And she said, okay. But they made sure I had exposure to that peaceful environment, that, those messages of love. That's pretty awesome. I was very fortunate. So some of you have been brought up in a religious background that may be shoving it down your throat and maybe you just go because you think you're supposed to and you don't really believe in everything. Oprah Winfrey didn't. She was like, wait a minute, this doesn't sound right. And she questioned it. So what are you judging? What are you judging? We do it all day. 
we will see something and we will make a judgment. Right? Okay, I'll give you an example. My neighbor, I don't know how old he is. He's got to be like pushing 80. And he's hunched over and he walks like the speed of a snail. But that man will walk up to the grocery store and shuffle, bent over. It's crazy, but he does it. It's supposedly good for him, and he does it. Now, people might see him and go, oh my God, you know, he's seen all whatever. I mean, if you talk to him, he doesn't really respond. And I found out later on, this man is a world traveler, and he still does it. I'm not sure he can go this year because I know he's sick. But he, every year, goes on at least one or two really major trips for a few weeks all over the world. And he takes all these beautiful pictures and he is so sharp and intelligent. But because he can't hear well, I found out, it's just he wasn't hearing me. I'd talk to him and he'd mumble or whatever. The assumption could have been that he's senile or he's, you know, whatever. So I invite this guy over to my house numerous times, especially holidays and that. I have him in, I feed him and give him some wine and he's happy. And he will sit and have the most intelligent conversation. There's nothing missing from this guy's head. But I can't tell you how many people treat him differently or talk to him. So, do you like blah, blah, blah? And I have to tell my friends, um, Larry's, uh, Larry's okay, all right? You can just talk to him like a normal person. Now, I'm not saying that these people are doing anything bad because if somebody doesn't respond, you know, we don't know what that is, but how quickly we are to make an assumption of what that situation is. You know, if somebody's been in prison, people are petrified of that person. Yeah, proceed with caution. That is probably something that is in them that could come out again. But you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be afraid because somebody made a horrible mistake. Or was it? Maybe they needed to learn something. Maybe they needed to experience something. Maybe they chose that experience. There's no good nor bad. You need to protect yourself from negative situations because there are dense beings on this planet. But let's Try to keep our judgments to a minimum. If you open up your mind, you'd be shocked at the conversations you can have with people you never would have talked to before. And you may find out something really interesting. That Muslim that you're petrified of, talk to them. You'd be shocked. They're just normal people. Normal people that want to be happy and they have families. And some of them make mistakes, and some of them have goofy ideas, just like everybody else. And some of them have, you know, more love and in their hearts for the one than people that go to church every week. We don't know, do we? So can we stop the judging? Can we catch ourselves and go, ooh, I did it again, because we do it all day. You know, somebody doesn't mow their lawn. They're lazy. No, maybe they are in pain and they, they, you know, they can't get out there and mow their lawn. I mean, you know, just seriously, can we just be open to one another? Can we drop the judgments about everything and everybody? That, do try it. You'll be shocked at what you're thinking all the time. You'll be shocked. I'm constantly catching myself. And if you change your, your behavior toward that person, you'll be shocked at what the response is. I did it recently to somebody that I thought was a certain way and had a certain personality. So I completely changed how I was dealing with that person. And that person laughs every time I come around because I tease them and I always say nice things to them and is now very helpful to me and is just like a completely different person. Persistence, an open heart, compassion. Your way is not 
the only way. It's your way. Don't be placing that on other people if you want to be received well, if you want to keep an open channel to the planet because every energy, every human being walking around there here is you. No, not you. You, did you see my diagram? I should pull it out again. Just picture a whole page full of dots. If we pull back, that's all we, we would see of us. Open space and dots, and some of them are closer together than other spaces. That's all, and we're sharing all of that. We're all those dots. So that person you see that appears to be an individual person, they're a collection of dots, a co collection of energy that's creating a certain way, that's experiencing. And it's all melding together. And when you put a barrier between you and that, you are blocking off that energy, that channel of gaining something powerful from that, of learning, of sharing the collective consciousness of which all ideas, all inspiration comes from, all manifesting. So if you're in this dense body and you've got these ideas and you're closing yourself up, don't expect anything good to show up. The universe is going to say, yeah, that's your energy. Stay there. Go ahead. We'll help you. That's what you're choosing. No judgment on the universe part, by the way. The universe doesn't judge. And I want you to remember that. There's no judge up there. Call it one, the one, the source, whatever you want to name it. There's no one entity judging anything. In fact, it's the opposite. It is total acceptance and love, even all the mistakes you make, even the judgments you make. There's no judgment on that side because that energy is not dense. That falls off. Judgment, all that garbage falls off the higher we get up to that frequency. None of that exists up there because that's a negative energy. That's negativity. There's no negativity up in there, which means there can be no judgment. How can there be judgment? It's pure love. That's it. So if the one doesn't judge, who are we to? Well, that person. No, no. That person might have been your saint in, a la in the last life. And this is your test. Can you accept that person? This is your test. It's not they're different and they're bad. It's your your opportunity to be something greater. This is your test. So while you're judging them, what are you doing? Judging? Better take a look at ourselves, right? I do it. I do it. You know why? Because the ego names things and says, okay, you know, it's a, it has a protection system. And then there's the beliefs and there's the programming of right and wrong that still go, shows up. So those are triggers. They will always show up. I don't know anybody who ha doesn't have a trigger. Dalai Lama has openly said, I feel anger. I experience anger. I just don't do anything with it. So it will trigger, there will be situations that are horrendous that will trigger anger and he watches it like a cloud float by. He has no reaction to it because that's the ego, the conditioning, that's the reaction to, as, as, as an ego protecting itself against something that is not good. It's not feeling good. But he has acceptance of it as an experience, not good nor bad for somebody looking at it that way just knows that this is, there's a better way. There's a better way. And that anger floats by and he releases it because this is, he knows, part of his test and challenge to be in that position to truly forgive those who are doing horrendous things. And guess what? That energy can change them. That shared energy can change them. When you're sending light and love, when you really want something to turn around, send it light and love. Not anger and f fighting it. It's like cancer, fighting it, hating it. Embrace it. Embrace it. It will neutralize. And the positive 
cells, molecules in your body will strengthen because you are now focused on love and light and acceptance. You're not fighting anything. They will strengthen and they have a chance to win that little battle to get you healthy again. And the cancer, which we all have in our body anyway, is no longer imbalanced. So it's there. There's a reason for it. It's just an imbalance, just like, like infections or anything else, have a purpose to protect you. Right? They're supposed to uh, create fevers and heat to kill off the stuff that's imbalanced and not good for you. The ego is no different. It sees something, it makes a judgment, it's trying to protect you because you've been told certain things. There's a lion in the room. Boom! Judgment. Not good, probably going to eat me. So there are some things that we do that are protection systems that are really neutral judgments, but that's not what I'm talking about today. And you know the difference. So when somebody tells you something, and when people tell me stuff, I think they're really surprised that they're not getting some kind of a reaction that's, I'm like, That, that's your life experience. Like, what, we're all walking around perfect beings? Yeah, really we are, because all that we're experiencing is part of that journey we chose, our challenges, and it's time to break through them, people. You can do it. Catch yourself today on how many times you make judgments. You will be shocked at your own thoughts. And then take that thought and ask yourself if you can turn it around. And the angry person, can you, like, instead of saying, oh, that's a jerk, say, that person's going through some struggles because there's some anger coming from another place. There's some frustration. There's some density. And you'll be shocked at the energy that you'll create in that room and to that person. By the way, it's not, a, it's not a distance thing. They could be on the other side of the world and connecting because we're just all one thing. There's no, there's no time and space. Technically, no time and, time and space. We are all just one thing happening at the same time. So when you're feeling something at that exact moment, it doesn't travel over here. They are feeling it, picking up on it. You are actually connecting that energy in a very positive way. And that's why prayer work does work. And they've done studies on this. And changed uh, crime rates with huge prayer groups and done all kinds of crazy studies that's mind-blowing stuff. All right, so I think you get the point. Um, you know, it's something that I absolutely pay attention to every day. And when a Thought comes in, you know, about something, it's always the past, right? Isn't it some, something in, uh, that you think about a certain person that maybe they did some injustice or whatever, and for, for whatever reason it pops up, I stop and say, oh my gosh, please forgive me. Forgive me for that thought, bless that person, and I ask for help to eliminate those thoughts, to recognize them, and feel the compassion that I should be feeling, and... And that's how I deal with it. And you'll find out that it just doesn't show up very often. But again, allow yourself to be human. But, you know, correct those things along the way. It's your opportunity to change it. It's not like, oh, I'm human. There's an excuse to be a jerk. I'm sending you light and love. Did you send it? Have you sent it out today? Please do. Please imagine your heart full of light and love and send it out across the planet. This does work, by the way. I'm telling you, scientists have monitored this stuff. It works. There's an energy that we are, that we are connected to, and when you send it out, there is a positive vibration, a frequency, that is actually going out to the universe. And if you do that every day, you will change this planet with me. It will happen. It's happening now, and you're a part of that. And you will watch. Watch your life start to change. Because when you find compassion, you'll be happier. People won't be threats anymore. You'll find that you're connecting to humanity. You'll have more compassion for it. 
and you'll see things changing and then abundance starts to flow in your life. Why? Because you're feeling happier. You're feeling more love. And the more you do it, the more, you, more love you will feel. Love that you didn't think you had in you for other people that you don't give a hoot about, that can be jackasses. All of a sudden you're going you're gonna to feel some real compassion for them. So practice that. I'm sending you light, love, abundance, healing. And I'm going to say the mantra that I shared with you that I got from the Master Key System. I am perfect. I am whole. I am strong. I am powerful. I am loving. I am harmonious. I am happy. And then I say, in addition to that, thank you for all the miracles that I'm receiving today and every single day. Thank you for that. Namaste.